Hey, welcome back to Project 38, Rangers Brockett here. One of my company cars got a tire that keeps going low. Uh, I think we've got a quick video today, a how-to. Um, tire goes down uh, over about three days, just a little bit of annoying. Uh, it is not the valve stem. This is not leaking. It's not coming from here, so my intentions are to spin this tire off, get it up on the table, wet it down, see if we can find a leak. And if so, we'll fix it. Um, so... Stay tuned, we'll show you how. Okay, first thing you wanna do is properly chalk your tires. Make sure it don't roll around, whatever's safe to you. Uh, just do that. Put your jack under the point where you wanna do it. We just wanna raise the vehicle enough to get the wheel off the ground. This is sitting on a piece of plywood on a uh, gravel floor, so the creaking is the wood crumbling. It'll settle. It's not critical. Okay, we're off the ground. Uh, pretty good driver. Knocked a rascal off. Okay, we got it off. Let's uh, get it up on the table and uh, we'll see. Oh, I see something already. There's a nail right there. Let me grab the camera here. Looky right there. There's a nail in it right there. So what we're going to do then is we'll pull that out. I'll show you how to get it out, and we'll show you how to plug it and how to seal it. So let's go. Okay, got it up here in the back of the old Ranger. Uh, all my tables are full right now with all the projects going on. My tool of choice has always just been a simple pair of dikes, diagonal cutters. And you just want to come in here and bite that thing, get it under here. It's a coming. There we go. Let's take a look at it there. Oh my goodness, look what we're about to pull out of this tire. Lay that aside. Then you could have a tool that looks like this, like a little file, a little rack on it. Okay, I'll show you what to do. Stand your tire up. Get it in a position to where we both can see. You wanna stick it in that hole right there like this, and just push it through. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to set the camera up and get it on the ground. There we go. That let all the air out of my tire. It is flat as a flitter now. So just get it in there and stick it in that hole. <clears throat> and when you get it in, just kind of work it up and down a little. Uh, separates the fibers and uh, it uh, cleans out that pocket okay after you get that some people say this is not necessary but this is the way that the old man taught me and that's no good that's no good stand by Okay, I guess you could tell by the excitement when I pulled that out of my tire and discovered that it was some kind of hex-headed screw of my bob. I got pretty excited, and um, in my excitement, I didn't even realize that the tire that was the air that was escaping from that tire was pointed right at the mic here on my camera. So I, I didn't even realize that. So there was a whole big long uh, explanation on how to put a plug into the plug tool and then how, uh, what to do next. So I think in the video, what you didn't see me see that you're gonna see me now do is I take, you take the tire plug from your tire kit, you know, set of plugs look like this. If you've got a wheeler, you probably have some under your seat in the trunk of your vehicle or something. Uh, if not, you can go buy Walmart, any tire store and, and buy a very good tire kit. Um, with plugs and patches in it but anyway it's one of these just strip one out then you have it and you have a a groove right here in your tool and then you just pinch this down right smart and then you start working it into that groove and if you need help you can take your dikes diagonal cutters or you know if you've got needle nose pliers or whatever it is you can pinch whatever works for you you just work that in there. I'm stretched out, wrapped, almost hugging the camera stand here. So I'm adding just a, a small element of difficulty. 
So you just get that, and then you can pull it through. So hopefully this explains what I did, what you couldn't hear, what I cut out of the video. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but anyway, you work this through. And then after, after you get this part in, this is the actual plug into your plug tool, then we have a reamer right here. And this is really rough and uh, probably didn't explain it good, but I'm going to explain it now. This goes where you pull your nail, tack, screw, whatever out of your tire. You press this in and you twist it a few times, work it in and out. And what that does is it cleans that and roughs that surface up for the glue that is already on these uh, to bite into and to help pretty good. Uh, also, didn't say this, and my, the air went out of that tire very quickly on me a while ago. Um, if your tire's got more air, it's a whole lot easier uh, to clean the debris and use this uh, debar tool. And uh, if your tire has air in it, it's a whole lot easier to insert your plug. So uh, I was in a hurry. It was the end of the day. I was tired. Um, you can tell that uh, I've added into a cleaner shirt. Uh, my hands are as clean as I can get them. Uh, but uh, so I've changed a little bit. So hopefully this helps explain what I cut out and what you missed because of that brilliant audio of mine. Okay, Hoss is running off with something in my truck, so we're just going to do it this way. Normally, you can put uh, rubber cement on this. It helps it. Uh, it's the way my old man taught me, but it's not 100% necessary. So once you get your plug through this, get your uh, the hole reamed out with that reamer, then you just stick your plug over the top of it and give it a good push in. Okay. Once you get it so far, give it a quarter twist and pull it out. Okay. Then the next thing you do, you get your dikes, put some tension on it, come in here with your a good sharp razor blade right here, and just cut that off flush with the tire. Okay, my tire went completely flat while I was doing that. I'm going to air the tire back up, and I'll show you how to check it. Okay, we've got the tire up to air pressure and we've just put the new plug in we've cut it off with a razor blade and now i've just got some glass cleaner and any liquid to do uh, you just want to spray that on there and check for bubbles i choose to, uh i choose to use window cleaner something with soap in it because it will exaggerate the air leak if there is it'll make the bubbles bubble now if there was a leak in here we'd know it'd just be sizzling bubbles going all over the place so i'm 100 percent fine with that so but quick tip uh, while you've got your tire off, go ahead and rotate that sucker around and check why you got it off. Just in case, there might be something else in there. It has happened to me once before that uh, I found a nail in my tire and then uh, took it off, plugged it, aired it back up, stuck it back on the vehicle, went out the next morning, had a flat, got to looking at it, and there was another nail. So, you know... Uh, the Bible tells us that the simple believeth every word, but a prudent man looketh well into his going. Folks, it, it is very important in life that we take the time to think well about our decisions that we make. Uh, look at the long term, make a goal, set goals, and try to reach them. Our society would tell us today we don't need to do that. But a society that's not setting goals, people that are not making goals are setting still. And now's not the time to set still. The Lord's coming back. He's quick to come back. And if we're not ready and watching, we're going to miss him. So take the ep extra step. Take the extra moment to do the extra uh, part, you know. To, just to be prudent when you do something. Uh, be, be frugal when you have to live in life. I got a little gravel there. I'm going to throw that out. So, okay. I'm 100% satisfied this is not going to leak. I'm satisfied that I'm not going to be putting air back in this rascal in a day or two. Uh, I, the job I do, we work construction. Uh, we're on job sites all the time. You never know what you're going to pick up. It's just part of life, folks. Fixing a, a, If you've got a tire that's got a leak in it, it's not the end of the world, and it's a quick thing. You can actually fix these on the vehicle, and, um, you know, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. It saves the whole step of taking the tire off. So we're going to get this mounted back up, and uh, we'll do our closing thing that we do. 
Okay, I just wanted to show you this, another tip. We're getting ready to spin these back on there. Uh, but I always like to take a little antisease. Best stuff in life, save you in the long run. Uh, on something that's hot temperature around brakes, I like to use the high temperature. On um, stuff that's not heat critical, I've got another kind. So just reach back in there, put a little dab on that tip of that thread, and uh, hit a lubricate all the way back through there. So just put a little bit on there. This will pay you big dividends in the future when you're sitting on the side of the road and you can't spin them rascals off and get them broke because they've seized up on you and they're too tight. So we'll get this on. Like I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but uh, we've had a lot going on in the last little while. Uh, it's fire season in our community. And we've had several, several, several structure fires, uh, some brush fires, um, a couple massive forest fires that we've been working, so we've been busy with that. Um, our church, we've been busy. We've been planning vacational Bible school that'll be starting in the uh, week of June, June 12th. I've uh, been busy at church, been busy at work, and also, um, you know, probably about uh, probably about a year ago or so, um, uh, fourteen months, I guess. Um, probably about yeah, about fourteen months ago, uh, I I had surgery on my back, had major back surgery. And it's been life-changing, life-altering. And I'm learning that I can't do the things that I used to do, and I sure can't lift the things that I used to lift, and I'm having to be more steady on my feet when I walk. So that's kind of slowed me down. I've been down in my back a little bit lately, too. I'm not complaining. I'm glad to be walking because before I had surgery, I was numb from the waist down on one side. Uh, couldn't feel my toes, couldn't feel my feet, my leg. I was getting, I think the, the surgeon called it slap foot, flat foot, something like that. But uh, I've got an appointment next month in May, mid-May, uh, to go up and see uh, about consultation about having injections done in my back. So appreciate your thoughts on that. Uh, leave a comment in the comments <laughs> and just let me know kind of what you all think about that, your experiences. Um, as the day of recording of this, <laughs> neighbors, um, as the day of recording this, this is April. Let me reset the camera up just for a second. As neighbors going by, it's time for fire meeting and I'm not going to make it today. I've had, uh, I had a stomach virus over the weekend, just tired. My little one, my little Todd, he, uh, had strep throat and had a rash broke out and we've got little infants in the fire department that belong to some of our firefighters. And sometimes they bring them, sometimes they don't. Otherwise, you know, we don't want to take sickness up there and get them. Uh, but just before I move to camera, I was saying that uh, today, the day of filming this is April the 24th and it's in 2023. 25 years ago today, I asked Lady Sprocket to be my wife and we've been married for 25 short years. And it's absolutely been a thrill. I love her more now than I ever have. I'm just so impressed what the Lord has done in our ministry, how he's helped us, the people we've met together, the things we've done, the sons we've brought into the world. One's turning into a man, and he'll, he'll be graduating high school here in a few days. So we just just so thankful. Uh, if I get a, a moment, an opportunity, um, you know, I'm just... I highly recommend marriage, uh, especially when you get a godly woman like the Lord blessed me to get. So I, I just do appreciate that. And uh, Lady Sprocket, I absolutely love you. Happy anniversary. You mean everything to me. And uh, the note that I wrote you this morning come from the bottom of my heart. I absolutely miss it. I couldn't imagine my life without you. I couldn't imagine living without you, and I wouldn't. And if you ever decide to leave, just pack a bag, because I'm going with you. You ain't leaving me around this nut house by myself. So I love you. Love you, um, Lady Sprocket. I love you with all of my heart. I'm just so glad to have you. Uh, folks, I just want you to know the Lord's coming back. Uh, I hope you're ready. If you're not ready, you need to get ready. 
If you are ready, if you are saved and you're born again and ready to meet Jesus, just stay ready. Just hang right in there. John said that the ax was laid to the root. And I've always said, folks, you just got to keep on chopping. Keep on chopping. Keep on praying. Find you a church. Get you a Bible. Read some scripture. I love you. I'm Ranger Sprocket. Thanks for stopping by Project 38. We'll see you next time.